गुड मॉर्निंग वैशाली गुड मॉर्निंग सर हाउ आर यू आई एम गुड सर थैंक यू कंटिन्यू टू स्माइल लाइक दिस थ्रू आउट द इंटरव्यू टुडे एंड ऑन ट्वेंटीथ ऑफ सेप्टेंबर आल्सो यस सर थैंक यू हाउ इज एवरीवन एट होम सर दे आर गुड आई होप नोबडी सफर्ड फ्रॉम कोरोना so we uh, did suffered from corona in the month of march now we are fully recovered and vaccinated okay good i hope there are no post corona complications also yes sir everything is fine sir Very thank good. you yeah now from your daf i am getting an impression that you were selected in the engineering service but you did not join is that impression right sir i have recently joined border road engineering services on the basis of that result and i am currently undergoing uh, training in grf center pune tell us about the service there uh, and it is not there on your daf right when the panel sees the daf yes sir there is no it's not recorded that you have joined the border road services yes sir because the result came out late and we had submitted the daf after the uh, prelims employment details after the prelims so that is why it is not there in the dab yeah yes sir but i would hope that it comes up because it shows you in a positive light so yeah, i hope the same sir yeah so tell us about the service what is border road service sir uh, we come under border road organization uh, and uh, the organization works in north and north northeast borders whereby uh, we create infrastructure for the movement of army and uh, sir we also uh, carry out projects in uh, our friendly countries like uh, like in afghanistan and uh, the main motive of the organization is to uh, facilitate the movement of uh, the army as well as uh, streamline the uh, deployment of the troops in case of uh, security issues sir pro recently did something commendable which was in the news what was that so it was in news due to the atal tunnel which was inaugurated it is the uh, longest tunnel uh, above the height of 10000 feet so sir so that was it uh, uh, that is why it was in news well, tell us about the training you are undergoing at pune so currently i am under quarantine i have recently joined uh, the campus and uh, my uh, quarantine period will end on 13th of september after that we'll be briefed about the uh, training so training hasn't actually commenced yes sir okay what are china's plans on the tibetan side which india should carefully sit up and take note of sir uh, the china's plan uh, on the tibetan side uh, largely is centered about the Uh, autonomy of tibet and uh, the lama uh, recently lama has been uh, declared by china in the tibetan area and said so it is uh, it is a matter of concern for india because tibet acts as a buffer between uh, the china and uh, our continent thereby creating some security implications for the country main reason i am asking this question is because it has to do something with bro So please give me a moment to think about it, sir. Sir, I'm not sure. Is it about the uh, recent infrastructural developments that are going on uh, in the border areas across the LAC, which uh, uh, which are problematic for India? And in uh, to counter that, we are also uh, taking initiatives and projects in uh, that particular region. Right. Good, Vaishali. Thank All you. All the best wishes for you. Please continue like this. Thank you, sir. Yeah, over to you. Hi, Vishali. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. So, the current service is with the Border Roads Organization. Yes, sir. Tell me, in how many states and union territories Border Roads is operating at present? sir uh, there are two union territories where the border roads is operating first one being delhi second is pune whereby uh, we have uh, headquarter services 
and the states uh, include uh, oh sorry sir jammu kashmir is also there jammu kashmir and ladakh is also there they have recently uh, uh, granted the status of union territories and they are not operating in andaman nicobar sir i am not aware about their operations in andaman nicobar sir <laughs> they are operating in andaman nicobar thank you sir and they operate in 19 states okay, okay. because basically their mandate is to operate in the bordering, bordering states okay. and they are also operating in some neighboring countries which are those five countries where they are operating sir nepal is there bhutan afghanistan they don't operate in nepal sir i am so sorry sir they operate in afghanistan bhutan myanmar tajikistan and sri lanka thank you sir how many bridges and airfields they have completed so far in their whole tenure sir i am not aware about the exact number sir good read about it Please. tell me what was the issue in case of shankri prasad versus union of india 1952 sir in that particular case it was regarding the fundamental rights being sacrosanct or not and uh, sir uh, in that particular case the uh, the courts had decided that the fundamental rights are sacrosanct which but, was the constitutional amendment which was challenged in that case sir i am not able to recall uh, what is the first constitutional amendment of 1951 sir sir i'll definitely go and read about it read about this case properly yes sir it's a very important case your state you have mentioned in column 6 as delhi yes sir who was the first lieutenant governor of delhi so i said not aware about this when was delhi university founded so i said not aware about who that. was the first vice chancellor of delhi university sir uh, technically it should be the uh, lieutenant governor but since i am not aware about his no name. no that is chancellor not vice chancellor okay sir who was the first chief minister of delhi sorry sir i am not aware who designed the secretariat of delhi sir i'll definitely what go. was the name of delhi under prithvi raj chauhan what was it called delhi city sir uh, his fort was called kila rai pithora rai uh, and lal kot i think was the absolutely city was also called the same thing who was the first police commissioner of delhi sorry sir not aware about that also. great you have been an engineer of you know automotive engineering am i right yes sir the power which is actually developed inside the engine cylinder yes. what is it called as so the actual power that is uh, developed is the uh, indicated power indicated power absolutely yes. correct if the air fuel mixture in a spark ignition engine is too rich yes sir then air fuel ratio will be approximately how much so if it's too rich it would be uh, around 8 uh, is to 1 or lower than that no it will be at least 10 is to 1 if it is too rich i said the word too rich tell me in a single play a single dry plate clutch yes sir torsional vibrations are absorbed by what so the springs are there in the uh, clutch plate those what are they called as sir uh, those are uh, coil springs uh, but i'm not aware about they are the called as torsional springs only as you are absolutely correct they are coil springs they are called torsional springs thank you sir. an over inflated tire yes sir it will wear out the tread at which point most sir at the point of contact no 
it will be at the center the calorific value of diesel is how much sir around 34 megajoules per kg oh no, absolutely wrong it is 42.5 mj per kilogram thank you sir the function of oil control rings what is the function sir the oil control rings are present on the piston uh, in the cylinder and they uh, in uh, they uh, provide the function of a uh, sealant as well as scrapping the uh, deposits that Dear are here vishali as an automotive engineer you must know they it simply prevents the oil to go to the combustion compartment if it goes there will be fire for your information what was the subject of abhijit sen committee report sir i am not aware deepak parek committee report sir sir i am not aware khusro committee report sir sir not aware about that okay thank you thank you over to you sir uh vaishali uh, you have mentioned that you are fond of reflective diary writing yes sir you tell me in the history which all diaries have become very famous name any one of them and tell me what is it about sir diary of any frank Uh, it's it has been uh, the largest uh, second largest selling uh, novel uh, which is widely read by uh, is widely read by the uh, students and the readers uh, across the world it is about the nazi concentration camp and uh, it is a diary of a young girl who is uh, who is jotting down the daily uh, events that are happening around her and how she is coping with that but is it correct to look into somebody's diary and make it public isn't it morally wrong sir it was published with the consent of her father who survived the concentration camp uh, if it if the cons, uh, consent of the uh, diary writer is not taken then it is against the privacy of that person sir okay let's say you are writing a diary if somebody takes your father's consent and starts reading your diary will it be okay with you sir as long as i am alive uh, my consent should be the priority uh, since the uh, young girl died in the camp uh, uh, it was her father's consent uh, that was taken all right Uh, tell me why are uh, major automotive companies leaving india like the ford and general motors what is the reason and what is what impact will it have on india the economy sir uh, the automotive uh, companies like ford or general motors are leaving uh, the uh, country because of the low sales and they uh, the uh, the secondly the under utilization of plant is there uh, for example in case of ford they have pointed out that the uh, only 20% of the plant was being utilized at that moment of time and sir uh, thirdly their market share is also low uh, indian market is uh, largely dominated by the maruti suzuki and uh, hyundai which constitute around 60% of the market share so so these things uh, are the prime factors there are some other factors as well uh, the or uh, um, given in enough reasons So tell me, um, once the drones start operating on a major scale, will it have a major impact on the logistics uh, part of the automobile industry? I mean, will uh, they lose uh, more commercial vehicles to this? Sir, uh, if the drones start operating in India, sir, it would uh, help in bringing down the logistic cost uh, for the country. Uh, as far as the automotive industry is con uh, concerned sir uh, there is a huge uh, pressure on the roadway sector that would be reduced and uh, sir secondly uh, there could be a, a a drop in the sales of automobiles but uh, sir that can be compensated with the newer technologies coming up and people adopting uh, electric vehicles and uh, other modern technologies in that regard okay i'll ask you another question comparatively you know uh, now we are opting for more of uh, renewable energy yes sir more so sir and you know we have objective of achieving certain amount of um, gigawatts in a particular year yes sir so when that happens uh, obviously it is going to have impact uh, on the hydrocarbons uh, you know which we are using currently yes sir when you switch over in a major manner towards renewable energy what impact will it have on strategy uh, at the strategic level in the global market sir in transition from the uh, 
conventional fuels to the non-conventional uh, or the renewable sectors. So the demand of the hydrocarbons can go down and in uh, forcing this particular aspect, the uh, Arab nations have also started diversifying their uh, industries. And uh, sir, secondly, uh, the climate change is a reality in uh, the uh, present scenario. And uh, sir, it will help in bringing down the emissions worldwide. And sir, in the, uh, sir, thirdly, the, uh, the amount of uh, expenditure that a person uh, makes on the health, that can also come down. So in that regard, health industry will, uh, will be, be better positioned. OK. Um... What measures has the government taken uh, to ensure that there is no oxygen shortage now in case the third wave comes? Sir, uh, sir it, the oxygen plants have, the oxygen supply capacity has been augmented. For example, in Delhi, the pre pressure swing adsorption uh, plants are uh, being uh, set up so that they uh, take up the uh, atmosphere air and thereby extract oxygen from it and supply to the uh, hospitals. And sir, also, sir, uh, it has been uh, reported that uh, the vaccination do doses reduce the severity of the uh, COVID. So there, thereby if the government pushes the vaccination pro program, we are reducing the severity also, thereby decreasing the number of patients who would require hospitalization so in both the demand side as well as the supply side, the government is working, sir. Okay, tell me amongst ASEAN, SAR, SCO, and other uh, regional organizations, which is the most uh, important for India? And why? Sir, uh, SAR uh, has been uh, in a dormant state for a while because of the uh, hostilities between India and Pakistan. Sir, uh, between the ASEAN and the uh, SCO, the SCO has gained prominence uh, in the recent uh, times because of the uh, Russia and China uh, being a part of it. And thereby, uh, we can uh, have a strategic uh, platform there to counter the, uh, the counter the cooperation that is going on between Russia and China, the proximity that is developing. And but you haven't answered my question so far. Sorry, sir. Uh, sir, in my opinion, it is the SEO which has been taking uh, the uh, prominence, but uh, sir, the ASEAN is also important for country, uh, the, our country as far as the East Asia is con uh, considered because that connects us to the global uh, market chain. Okay, thank you, Vaishali. Thank you, sir. You are muted, sir. Oh, sorry for that. Hello, Vaishali. How are you? I'm good, sir. Thank you. All well? Yes, sir. So, you were giving the importance of the ASEAN. Yes, sir. So, can you tell me a little bit on India's at East policy? Sir, India transited from the look East policy to at East policy to further the cooperation uh, in the uh, East Asian countries, the East Asian countries. The uh, manufacturing or the assembly sector in the East Asian countries is very strong. We can, uh, we can collaborate and cooperate with these countries, considering we have a higher skill set uh, and uh, higher labor power. And that can help uh, us in becoming the part of the global value chain. And also, sir, uh, the government has indicated that after making India, we are uh, moving towards assembly in India. So in that regard also, it can boost the manufacturing. Yeah, but, uh, but we didn't join the RCEP. Yes, sir. Sir, we did not join the RCEP because of the uh, economic concerns and the industries were going to uh, affect uh, badly, particularly the dairy sector. And, uh, the, uh, oh, and also secondly, over the issue of country of origin, whereby the, uh, we have free trade agreements with the uh, countries and uh, China could uh, dump its uh, project, uh, its products through those countries into the country. When now, you when you began the discussion with the chairman, yes, you gave an impression as if the BRO is uh, some kind of a positive, uh, you know, element of soft power of India. Yes, sir. But uh, recently there was a news item that Myanmar does not want the BRO 
to build the Kalagan road or even the trilateral. Yes, sir. Why is that so? Sir, it was largely due to, to the delays that were there in the project. Uh, it, the projects were decided way earlier, but the uh, execution has been slow. And that is why the Myanmar has uh, raised issues. So um, the, I thought the BRO should be a solution to that rather than the problem. You are supposed to be the fastest builders. Yes, sir. Uh, that is true. But there is uh, unrest in the Myanmar as well, which has contributed to the situation. And uh, sir, secondly, there are some uh, lags uh, in the execution of a project. For example, the Anal Atal Tunnel itself was envisaged in uh, 2000, in the year 2000. And the foundation uh, stone was laid in the year 2008, uh, I suppose. So, uh, no, no, we are speaking on Myanmar. Na? Yes, sir. Tunnel kaan se aage? So I was talking about the lags which are there in the administration. So that is uh, because of that the uh, issue has come. And which is that road we built in Afghanistan? So it is uh, Zaranj Delaram Highway. Uh, and what does it connect? Sir, it uh, opens the ga uh, gateway of West Asia for our country. It connects uh, us to the Chahabar port and uh, there by the Central Asia. As an automotive engineer, yes, sir. can you tell me why are we not able to develop and be independent or Atmanirbhar in regard to aero engines? Sir, the technology in aero engines are different from the automotive uh, engines in the sense that the auto, in automotive engines, we are largely using internal combustion engines, but in the aero engines, we are using scramjet technology and uh, sir secondly we need to uh, invest heavily in terms of uh, research and development if we uh, want to come at par with the western countries so these are the two main reasons that uh, i can think of at the moment sir and how do you understand the term cryogenic engine sir in a cryogenic engine the uh, fuel uh, is uh, stored at the liquid uh, in the liquid state and in order to maintain that liquid state we the sub-zero temperature is required and that is why uh, the term uh, cryogenic uh, appears in that uh, engine paper quilling yes sir how different is it from origami sir in paper quilling uh, we use scissors to cut the strips of the paper and then roll it. But in origami, it is uh, more about folding the paper into different shapes to get the desired shape. So that, that is the basic difference. And uh, so there's a difference in the origin uh, of the two arts as well. You did some uh, mechanical design. Yes, sir. How do you understand by the term IPR? Pardon, sir? IPR. IPR. Inter Intellectual property rights. Sir, uh, these are the rights of the innovators and uh, if a major innovation is there, one can file the patent or copyright or trademark for, uh, the, for the goods or the uh, design that they have developed. And uh, this patent right gives uh, the, uh, the developer a certain share or a loyalty uh, to a certain period of time. What is the difference between IPR and copyright? Sir, copyright uh, falls under the broad category of IPRs that are there. And sir, copyright is for uh, the uh, different type of content, like the textual content could be there or the artistic co co content like uh, photograph uh, copyrights are there, music copyrights are there. In that regard, uh, the IPR is a broader term, but uh, copyright is a part of it. Other terms, IPR and patent, are they interchangeable? Sir, uh, again, sir, patent uh, is a form of IPR that is provided to the inno innovators. And uh, sir, uh, but they should not be uh, interchanged technically because uh, for a particular product, patent would be more specific than IPR. Name two traditional art forms in India other than Madhubani. Sir, Kalamkari painting is there uh, from Andhra Pradesh. And uh, sir, uh, sir, Gond art is also there. 
what is so special about kalamkari why does it get that name sir uh, kalam in english means pen and in english kalam in acha kalam okay sorry ha okay sir okay ha so it means pen uh, so in ah. kalamkari the uh, bamboo stick is uh, used but the tip of the bamboo stick is uh, as thin as the pen and uh, thereby the art is drawn on the cloth or the other canvas Uh, and okay. fine lines are used in uh, kalamkari and uh, what is the distinctive feature of gown paintings the gown paintings are tribal arts and they uh, have uh, religious connotations to their painting and uh, generally they paint uh, about the mahabharat kings and uh, they also uh, the theme of the paintings are also uh, derived from the nature like peacock is a very prominent uh, figure uh, that appears in gown paintings so. Thank you, Vishali. Great speaking to you. Wish you all the best. Over to ma'am. Her screen is frozen. Okay. Until she comes back, I will have a few questions to ask. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. in the earlier part of the interview when we were talking about diary of a young girl yes sir i got an impression that you have not read the book i have read the book sir so why did i get the impression that you have not read the book sir uh, i am not in a position to answer that question sir you described the book as predominantly her experiences in the concentration camp yes sir is that true sir it was predominantly her uh, journey to escape the concentration camps whereby her family had to uh, had to hide at different places and how they had to shut down their lights when people uh, from the nazi army had come up and in those dark moments uh, also she had noted uh, the or the journal the uh, events in a light humor and that i adds life to uh, her uh, novel and that kind of uh, gives the impression also that there are light even in the darkest hours of her uh, moments so, so that madam is back let's hear her questions yes sir good morning vaishali i'm sorry i got disconnected good morning ma'am uh vaishali we're talking about paper quilling uh, being different from origami in terms of its origin yes ma'am so can you tell us about the origin of paper quilling and paper quilling was originated in france it was largely practiced by the nuns there to decorate the cover of the bible that it traces back before even before france it's before that also any idea i'm sorry i'm not aware about the goes back to ancient egypt actually thank you ma'am okay uh who was the first woman ias officer sorry ma'am i'm not aware about that ips i'm sure you must be aware of uh miss kiran bedi okay uh what is this difference between the national capital region and national capital territory Ma'am, national capital region is inclusive of the uh, national ca capital territory and other satellite uh, towns of the adjoining states like Faridabad, Alwar, and Gurgaon. So it is a wider region, and uh, it has been carved out for the planning purpose and uh, the uh, mobility of the citizens in the NCR. Considering that uh, Delhi, uh, in Delhi, the majority of the contribution comes from the service sector. and service sector uh, centers are located in uh, those satellite towns aas paas pani barse delhi pani ko tarse why is this saying so famous ma'am i am not uh, sure about the exact reason i can think of uh, something uh, uh, like uh, so what is it what is it connected to Ma'am, it could be uh, due to urban flooding uh, and the quality of water issues that are there in uh, Delhi. And uh, thirdly, it could also be due to the uh, lower rainfall that Delhi gets uh, in around uh, a limited uh, three or four weeks period. Uh, 
and compared to the other regions of our country, we get lesser rainfall. What is reflective thinking? What is reflective thinking? Ma'am, in reflective thinking, we uh, reflect upon the actions or the decisions that we have taken. And uh, it is a kind of uh, self-correction mode that a person opts for. Uh, and uh, in that particular, uh, if the reflective thinking goes wrong, it can make uh, one a better uh, version of himself or herself. Uh, so if I may ask you, since you put your thought process on record, so if I may ask you, what according to you has been the best or the worst decision in your life? Ma'am, uh, the best decision would be the preparation of civil services. I would say because uh, in terms of knowledge, the horizon, horizon has expanded. And also, ma'am, uh, it gives a student an ample amount of time to think about himself or herself as well. And in that process, uh, I think I have uh, I have improved myself a bit. And uh, coming to the worst decision, ma'am, uh, and please give me a moment to think about the worst uh, decision. It's okay I'm if you don't want to answer it. That's fine. Not an issue. Uh, and one last question: What, according to you, are the three key issues of you know pertaining to women in India? And what, as an officer? future officer, what efforts would you take to deal with them? Ma'am, the first issue that I can think of is the safety for women in India. And uh, ma'am, second issue would be the issue of health, whereby around 50% of our women are anemic in the country. And ma'am, uh, thirdly, it would be education, because these three forms the foundation of a woman to uh, get empowered and to enter the uh, uh, the economic sphere and domain, thereby contributing to the nation as well as to the self-esteem of an individual. So in that particular regard, these three uh, issues are there. And ma'am, uh, we can do, uh, we can contribute to the empowerment of women in these regards. Firstly, by uh, having the access and affordability of the healthcare centers, making women more about their self-esteem, their self-worth. And uh, ma'am, uh, secondly, educating uh, women is very important because they, uh, this opens up the intellectual capability and uh, in, instills a sense of independence. And uh, ma'am, in the safety regards, the government has been taking some actions and there are laws in place, but the implementation is something that, where we can work upon to make women more uh, secure and safe in their environment so that they can step out their, out of their homes uh, freely. So that also, uh, adds to the fundamental rights of women, that is uh, freedom of movement. So these Thank you, Vaishali. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All the best. All Thank the best. You, what is the meaning of the term Taliban? Sir, I'm not aware about the meaning of the word Taliban. Should India recognize Taliban regime in Afghanistan? Sir, uh, India has been... Uh, has been adopting the wait and watch policy, but recently India has officially announced that it has uh, it has uh, communicated with uh, Taliban over the security and evacuation of our uh, uh, people there. But officially, we have not recognized the Taliban. So I think uh, whether we should rec recognize Taliban or not should depend on the uh, the actions that the Taliban take in the near near future, whether it is being inclusive or not, uh, and also the uh, the atrocities or the uh, violence component of, of the Taliban is there or not. If Taliban is ready to shun the violence and uh, mend its ways, uh, New Delhi can engage with Taliban for the interest of our country. Has any government conferred recognition on Taliban regime? Sir, uh, there have been countries who have uh, recognized Taliban in the previous stint also. And in this, uh, in this regime, the, uh, some of the Western countries have uh, recognized, Canada has recognized uh, Taliban's uh, rule in Afghanistan. And uh, sir, there has been a debate about the legitimacy sh should be given to uh, Taliban or not, even in the BRICS summit that we had. 
we had Are dropped forgetting the most important country that has recognized taliban regime the us china sorry sir uh, i'm not uh, i'm not able to recall the names uh, as of now sir what are agama granthas or agama sources of philosophy the agams are religious texts in jainism and they are uh, considered as uh, the uh, vachans of the uh, tirthankar uh, which were given uh, by the lord mahavira and recorded by the later gurus and uh, they are uh, inclusive of the rules that a uh, grahast or the uh, shravak should follow in their lives and also the uh, there are different sections with, which deals with different avastas of uh, the uh, human life uh, the uh, grahast the muni ashram uh, so certain rules and uh, procedures that should be followed in thought and practice uh, in action sir good thank you vaishali all the best thank you sir a very good interview vaishali thank you sir i know that i am speaking for the whole panel when i say that you have enjoyed conducting the interview thank you sir and we would like to think that you have enjoyed giving the interview which yes, is sir. how it should be and continue to enjoy yes sir i am also happy to say that there is no major big or suggestion i want to make to you there are just a couple of like small i call them minor points yes sir so may i take a note of it sir sure, sure. thank you sir yes sir now one thing is it is quite possible that in the initial minutes of your interview yes sir it will somehow come out that you have joined bro yes sir actually i think it should come out like i already said it shows you in a positive light yes sir but then that also opens up a possibility that the interview may revolve around yeah. being an officer in with bro yes sir and then there is literally an infinite range of questions yes sir so from from engineering point of view yes sir who it can take us to foreign relations so like myanmar came up or yes, sir china you, also came up here yeah. yeah you were uh, Uh, not initially right on the off take of the question on tibet yes sir and when i prompted then uh, you found it and uh, uh, it was it was all okay but expect that it's possible that your interview may revolve around the fact that you are bro officer yes sir so kind of uh, all kinds of preparation including budget and budgetary provisions and ongoing projects yes sir and uh, although you may have just joined and yes, in quarantine yes sir if you take care to know about the training and if that comes out in your answers you will positively gain marks uh, uh, on all such questions if you say that i have just joined and i am in a quarantine yes sir you will not lose marks yes sir but if you are still able to come out with answers that means you have taken special care to study brush up all those issues it shows you again in a more positive light and your score will actually increase if you do that yes sir then there were a couple of times when you just said i am not aware of it yes sir I'm not aware of it yes sir uh, the better uh, way of putting it is to say i am sorry i am not aware of it yes instead of just saying i am not aware of it it is uh just saying i'm not aware of it is pune manners and you pick them up in quarantine period <laughs> <laughs> so i'm sorry yes i'll work upon it yeah, yeah. no 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 big not not much big to i mean you will yes, very easily yes sir yes. then i saw that on some questions which you could not answer yes sir initially you said i don't know with a smile yes sir but then on some of the as they continued especially by dr bhalla yes sir the smile vanished yes sir and you became kind of worried you started wearing worried look about how is this interview going yes sir to say yes. i don't know rather too many times actually that is the test 
in the interview situation. Yes, sir. The so way to come out with flying colors is to hold your nerve. Yes, sir. Ensure that smile doesn't vanish. By saying I don't know, you will not lose marks most of the times. Most of the times. Yes, sir. But by letting yourself be disturbed, that is what may result into loss of marks. Yes. So it's like uh, continuing to hold. Actually, smile indicates confidence. Yes, smile also indicates that you are hold of the situation. You have got hold of the situation. Then only you can kind of relax and then smile. Then uh, last, just two or three small points. One is uh, you didn't know the first woman IAS officer. Yes, sir. But you did know the first woman IPS officer. Yes, sir. But the way you gave that answer, you said, Miss Kiran Bedi? Yes, sir. So it ended with a question mark. The tone. The yes, tone. Sir. So you didn't come out with confidence. I mean, it was not a statement. It was, you are almost asking a counter question. Is it Miss Kiran Bedi? Yes, sir. The answer is right. You need not be tentative over there. Then, while almost all your answers were very precise, that made me feel a bit surprised how a couple of answers towards the end of your interview were rather lengthy and not brief. Yes, sir. I mean, there I got an impression that you are not aware of the precise answer, but you are trying to say something. So it is like kind of beating around the bush. Okay. One example I noted in order to share this feedback with you is the discussion on Taliban Yes, sir. And whether India should confer diplomatic recognition on Taliban. Yes, sir. Talib means disciple. And Taliban is the plural of Talib. But as UPSC aspirant, you will be expected to know this and like uh, most of the things about the organization Taliban and their policies and what all they are doing in Afghanistan and what all they are likely to do in Kashmir with the help of Pakistan and China. Yes, and it is China that has conferred diplomatic recognition on Taliban. And then like last couple of, I thought there could always be lot of questions on Jainism, yes, sir. on mechanical engineering. Then uh, I did raise a couple of questions on diary of Anne Frank or diary uh, of a young girl. But we have already discussed that during the interview. Yes, sir. You have some Indira Award, right? Yes, sir. So the question can be about the award. Yes, sir. That can also take us to the questions on Indira Gandhi. And her tenure, her policies, etc. can come up for discussion. Baki Art, Kalamkari, Madhubani, you have discussed very well. Yes, sir. While discussing quilling, paper quilling, I particularly noted here, why are you so serious while discussing paper quilling? You are very grim, unlike the rest of the interview. Quilling, you pay attention to your responses to the uh, uh, question on quilling. Yes, sir. So, I mean, no need to be that serious over there. But Baki, you are all set. Yes, sir. Uh, you are going to come out with flying colors. Even today's performance will take you to beyond 180. It's an excellent score by UPSC like standards. But as a panel, we hope that that is the whole purpose of mock interview. That if it is 180 today, then on 20th of September, you should cross 200. I hope so. Yeah. I wish so. Yeah. We too. Not wish, we are sure you can. Thank you, sir. It's kind of brushing up on all these issues and you will cross 200. So all the very best, Vaishali. Thank you, sir. All the best, Vaishali. Thank you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. By Thank the way, there could also be questions on the very name Vaishali. Huh? Yes, yeah, sir. That I have prepared true. that, but that's that's true. True. Yeah. with Jain. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, and Buddhism as well. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. That can come up. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All the very best. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So should I leave the meeting? Yes, huh? please. Yes, please. Thank you, sir. All the best, Vaishali. Thank you, ma'am.